which we do not have any future tense. We do not distinguish sexes. It is Estonian language. No sex, no future. Maybe that also explains the 1.3 million. Good morning from Tallinn. Looks like the rain that was expected has come and gone. We hope. And um, there it is a bit cloudy, but it's not raining. So hopefully we won't have to deal with rain when we go out today. This is the view from our ninth floor apartment. And this is meant to be the rush hour traffic. You can see the sea from here. Couldn't see any of that at night. There's a couple of cruise ships here. We can actually start our first walk. We are walking around three minutes. We are starting to get to the upper part of the old town. The upper part is like 20, 30, 40 meters higher than the lower part. So we have to actually do a little climbing, but we're gonna make in between stops so we can rest and it's gonna be very nice and slow pace, okay? And this is the place where we're actually gonna start the tour. So if you guys are ready, let's go and have our first walk. We also heard that people here in Estonia, we're not very religious. We're not very keen churchgoers. Do you guys know what is the population of Estonia? No. 1.4 million. 1.3. 1.3 is correct. It's very correct. Never. It has never come that uh, quickly. So our total is 1.3 million. I think most of you are coming from the cities that even has more people in. Here in Tallinn, we have a little bit more than 400,000 people living. Russians were living here in Estonia. Then by all means, they are Estonians, of course, as well. Most of them have Estonian passports. This is already the second, third generation of every Russians who have grown up here in this independent country. But the main reason why we're still very strongly distinguishing Russians and Estonians here is not because we don't like them or vice versa. It's actually purely because up until nowadays we have a very high language barrier. Now most of the Russians who are living here can't really speak a word in Estonian language and the younger generation of Estonians who grew up during the 90s sadly can't speak Russian language either anymore. So at the moment we are just facing this situation where we don't have the common language. And behind your back over there, there is a city wall that divides the lower and the upper part. And this place where we are at the moment, uh, standing or sitting, it's actually a border that divided those separate parts back in medieval times. Even though the city was united, it had some differences between who lived down there and who lived up here. Now down there, that was a home for merchants. And up here, of course, the nobility lived. This religious order that came from Germany. So when those crusaders arrived here, the German nobility started to move here as well. And they were very smart people because when they arrived here, they immediately took over all the economy. Even though there is no Estonian who goes inside there. And it has a very simple reason for that. Russian Orthodox is not our religion. I mean, of course, we go inside there if you want to uh, enjoy the architecture, the culture, but not when we want to take part of the ceremony. I mentioned also that we have a huge population of Russians living here, and if they live in the city center, that's the main church where they go to. And that has been always the main place where the city was being ruled. This Russian Orthodox church right in front of this very strategic place was also a very clear sign that this is Russia. So that's also one of the reasons why this church is built right on a center on the top of the mountain. So that's why they created this hotel that originally was completely bugged and it offered everything to a person that one could desire. They had hairdressers, tentis, different restaurants, cafes, 
because KGB wanted to make sure that if a person goes inside of the hotel, they wouldn't feel any need to go out. And while they stayed inside, everything that they're talking and planning could be heard by KGB. Now, during the 80s, there was one Finnish tourist who heard about this rumor that this hotel might be bugged, and he thought that he's going to put this on a little test. So he entered his hotel room, and on a very clear voice, he said that those Soviet Union hotels never have any toilet papers. Then a couple of minutes passed, he had a knock on his door. There was a room service offering all kinds of different toilet papers to him. So maybe his point was proven. Nowadays, this hotel still functions as one. Hopefully it's not bugged anymore, but who knows? Right behind the forest on the left side, there are those big building blocks that are emerging. Now, this is the biggest area that we have here in Tallinn, and that is also the biggest Russian suburb that we have. 80% of people living there are Russians, the rest are Estonians. Towards the end of our um, walking tour, the rain just started pouring down like a shower. But uh, just as soon as it started, it finished and the sun started shining again now. So now we're going to walk around the whole town square, see the pharmacy building, the oldest existing pharmacy, and uh, then go to find something to eat. This is the only hill in Estonia, or in Tallinn at least, and we went up there with the, with the guide. It's starting to drizzle again, so we're taking some shade under hotel's canopy. They spell hotel differently as well. As we were walking to the train station and the market next to the train station, we came across the public toilet, and it is impressively clean. Everything in Tallinn is clean, including their toilets. And this is a public toilet, and it's super clean. Trains. I really like the look of these trains, so we asked her if we can go, ask the lady at the ticket machine if we can go um, on the train just for a short journey, and she said you can, and the next one going is at platform 9, so we're going to take the train couple of stops and I think this is the market next to the train station and then there's a creative city past that so we'll do a little train journey and come back and go to these things and you can buy the ticket on the train and they said it's um, just one euro forty to buy a ticket to go one stop or two I think cycling is a big thing here. There's a rack for cycle as well. Nice impromptu train journey. Very clean. It's very, very clean. Everything in Tallinn is very clean. Even the toilets are so clean. Right on time. It's so smooth as well. Hey. And come back. I'm coming back. We just want to try your train. <laughs> One euro for this train, one ticket. You buy two tickets, two euro. This is two. And the tickets. 
There is a pin for rocket share as well. These apricots look completely different to any apricot we've seen before. We were quite close to here before, but then we took a couple of detours. We took a train ride and we took a tram ride and we came right back here. We still haven't had anything to eat. There are some places to eat here. So any vegetarian you have, it will delicious. Yes, please. We have a spinach, a, a this potato, okay, and, potato and this one is cheese. I'll have one potato. You can see after yes, you can have it. Yes, please. Oh. Right yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. If anything else in the vegetarian option apart from this fried bread kind of thing, we got the potato on to try out. It's really crispy and flaky, and the potato filling is very tasty as well. The chili sauce is very nice, but it is very, very hot, so you use it very sparingly. That's not mayonnaise, that's yogurt. Never had that being served like this before. It's um, probably um, was a big thing. I think they give you the yogurt with the with the chili sauce to cool down the heat of the chili sauce, and it works really well if you mix the two and then have it um, with the pastry. Then it's a really good combination. <laughs> to the apartment to have a cup of tea before heading out again. We, I had some peppers and some tomatoes and bought some uh, mozzarella and mushrooms to make some stuffed peppers. Unfortunately the oven is a little bit iffy here so I... it's burnt at the edges but it should be still edible. When you're traveling you don't always get to have salads and vegetables so it's nice that we have an apartment and um, we can get some vegetables into us as easily as well uh, no it wasn't too it's not too bad even if i say so myself hopefully this will give us the energy to go out and do some more walking tonight the more i try to avoid stairs the more they keep finding me Let's go up the stairs and try to find the harbour. It's a OMG situation. There's some more stairs and no sign of harbour here. We climbed all these stairs just to find this. There's quite a few people here but there's nothing here to see.
It was a semi-successful day. The walking tour was great, but the other two things we tried to do didn't work out so well. There isn't a very decided plan for tomorrow, so we'll see you in the morning and uh, probably go do another walking tour. Good night.